Hello everyone, welcome to Sunya IS and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to talk about provincial kingdoms of medieval India, basically about Vijayanagar and Bahmani Sultanate, uh, Vijayanagar Empire and Bahmani Sultanate and apart from that, a few topics here and there. Okay, so that is what we are going to do today. Now, before starting, let me just tell you a little bit about this course that is revised entire prelim syllabus through 3000 plus MCQs. We are uh, towards the end of ancient and medieval history. After that, we are going to start art and culture, science and tech and current affairs, right? Polity, economy, modern history, geography, environment and ecology, all of that is done. Okay. And um, if you want to attempt all the questions that we have, about 3,000 questions, and get your hands on the new kind of uh, pattern that UPSC is, uh, you know, adopting, so you can go for this course and you can contact this number and visit this website. Okay. So with this, let's start. Question number one, consider the following statements with regard to the Vijayanagar Empire. It was founded by two brothers, Harihara and Bukkaraya. Founders of this empire were initially officers under the Hoysala of Dwar Samudra. And at the time of its establishment, the Del Delhi Sultanate was ruled by Muhammad bin Tughlaq. So this is about Vijayanagar and Vijayanagar Empire. As you can see, we are using this word empire. We are using this term because it was such a such an impactful empire that today also we feel the impact of Vijayanagar. And now we are actually claiming back the heritage that Vijayanagar created. Right. So it was found by Harihara and Bukka. Right. But these were not officers under Hoysalas of Dwar Samudra. These were basically officers under Kakatiyas. Kakatiyas. Kakatiyas dynasty. Fine. And this was a dynasty. But they created an empire out of it. And this is when Mughal Empire has uh, not started. Okay. So, before Mughal Empire, there was another empire that was created. That was Vijayanagar Empire. But we don't know much about it, sadly. And UPSC is focusing every year. Even last year, there was a question on Dev Raya. Right. So, second is incorrect. Third is absolutely correct. When it was formed, Vijayanagar Empire, it was ruled by Muhammad bin Tughlaq and uh, Delhi uh, Sultanate, Tughlaq dynasty, Muhammad bin Tughlaq. Muhammad bin Tughlaq, the same ruler who was called the wisest fool. Who was called the wisest fool. Right. So, here only two is the correct answer. See, now let's study a little bit about Vijayanagar Empire. So, the Vijayanagar Empire, also called the Karnataka Kingdom, because you can see here that a broad area of Karnataka is being covered. And today also, whether we talk about um, the Hampi monuments, right, everything is found in Karnataka. So, Karnataka Kingdom, medieval Hindu empire that ruled much of southern India. Established in 1336 by Harihara and Bukkaraya of the Sangam dynasty, members of a pastorist Gadariya community um, that claimed Kuruba lineage. You don't need to uh, remember so much. Just remember Harihara and Bukka. What is this Sangam? Is this Sangam the Sangam age? No, this is not the Sangam age. Basically, there were three, uh, there were four uh, dynasties of Vijayanagar Empire and please ignore this okay this map is problematic Wikipedia ka hi map hai hai. this is problematic ignore this now that I have given you attention specifically towards it you will not ignore it but you understand what is our political stand we don't get maps who are uh, which are actually properly representative so map not accurate let me just write it map not accurate Okay, fine. So, um, there were three, there were four dynasties. And uh, how will you remember these four dynasties? Let me just tell you. These were Sangam, Sulua, Tulua, Aravidu. 
these were the four dynasties of the vijayanagar empire how will you remember them s s t a that there was a subject in uh, in the school time called s s t right so just remember just try to visualize that you have got an s uh, got an a in that subject and s s t a right so harihara and bukka were from the sangam the very first dynasty because of course they were the founders so they were from the, from the first dynasty only right um member then empire rose to prominence as a culmination of attempts by the southern powers to ward off the turco persian muslim invasions by the end of 13th century at its peak it conquered almost all of southern india's ruling dynasties and pushed the turco persian sultan uh, sultans of the deccan beyond the tungabhadra krishan river to up so this is broadly the krishna uh, river krishna river starts from uh, not here here somewhere it uh, starts from trimbakeshwar mahabaleshwar as far as i can remember mahabaleshwar so the thing is that krishna has this tributary called tungabhadra right so tungabhadra uh, doab was the one for which all the battles were being fought right all the fight all the struggle was for the tungabhadra doab because it was a very fertile doab right so tungabhadra krishna doab uh then fine it is at its it at its height ruled the lands of modern states of karnataka andhra tamil nadu kerala goa and some parts of telangana maharashtra some parts of sri lanka as well and it was a hindu kingdom right uh, the the last remember the last hindu king we talked about in uh, the mughals acha we'll talk about the mughals it was king hemu right to so, hemu would be the last king last uh, hindu king that would rule india uh, some part of india but vijayanagar empire was a major hindu uh, empire empire lasted till 1646 although its power greatly declined after a major military defeat in the battle of talikota actually battle of talikota is uh, considered the battle which led to the fall and uske baad just for name sake vijayanagar empire was there. dynasty was there not empire empire is named after its capital city of vijayanagar as hampi was renamed whose extensive ruins are now a unesco world heritage site in site in karnataka so capital of vijayanagar this is broadly this is not khanwa we are not studying this is by chance over here okay consider the following pairs books written during vijayanagar empire and written by whom amukta malyada vidran madura vijayam ganga devi and manu charitam ala sani pedana how many of the given statements are correct see there are a few books that are written by the most powerful king of the vijayanagar empire about whom even babar mentioned and uh, who was that king you must be knowing krishna dev raya so krishna dev raya was a great writer also he wrote amukta malyada okay he wrote amukta malyada and uh, amukta malyada is basically a telugu poem fine it is a telugu poem not by vidra uh, vidya ranya fine uh that is amukta malyada so this is something ju just you know like what harsha wrote harsha um whatever things na uh, ratnavali nag bhat right whatever he wrote you need to know that similarly whatever krishna dev raya wrote you need to know that so amukta malyada is one of them madura vijayam is written by ganga devi and madura vijayam basically means the victory of madurai the victory of madurai fine and um, it is overall this piece of literature manu charitam you know who manu was manu was the hindu lawgiver so it is written by alasani pedana this is very important manu charitam is very important and alasani pedana is also very important because in the court of krishna dev raya you know all important uh, kings have this tradition of having a few nobles or a few you know gems in their court so krishna dev raya had alasani pedana one of them 
out of his ashd diggaj ashd diggaj just like chandragupta the second had um, this uh, what do you call it navratna similarly akbar also would have navratna same thing alasani pedana was with uh, alasani pedana was a part of ashd diggaj in krishna dev raya's court and he wrote manu charitam uh, manu charitam of course about the first law giver manu so here only two pairs are correct next question consider the following kingdoms end of hosala hosala kingdom end of the madurai sultanate establishment of the bahmani kingdom ending of the bahmani kingdom how many of the above statements took place in the reign of vijayanagar empire see broadly if this kind of a question comes do not leave it right because they are not asking you under which king they are asking you under which empire and this much you are, you are supposed to know so let's just clear it out the hoysala kingdom hoysala kingdom ended in the year 1343 remember hoysala uh, became the capital later on by uh, became the major city in vijayanagar as well and uh, yes the ending of hoysala kingdom happened during the vijayanagar empire so this is correct madurai sultanat what is madurai sultanat it is basically the pandya regime right pandyas of madurai so that is where this work is also written madurai vijayam theek hai so second is also correct establishment of the bahmani kingdom bahmani kingdom was the rival of vijayanagar empire they were fighting for the krishna tungabhadra doa and uh, yes this is correct and surprisingly although the bahmanis defeated the vijayanagar empire in the battle of talikota and that was a very decisive victory uh, and defeat for vijayanagar even then the final uh, you know final ending of vijayanagar empire happened after the bahmani kingdom ended right so the ending of bahmani sultanat happened in 1347 and this was after this was uh, within the reign of vijayanagar empire now after that bahmani split up into five successor states right bijapur golconda ahmednagar all that but overall the bahmani sultanate had ended right so that is there so here all four statements are correct okay yes so uh, i think i said that uh, Vijayanagar and Bahmani fought the battle of Talikota it was actually the Vijayanagar and Deccan Sultanate the successor states right because the Deccan Sultanate eventually defeated Vijayanagar so that is there okay so the see here the area of Bahmani Sultanate is broadly north of the Vijayanagar empire and that's why Vijayanagar empire you know to import horses to make trade with the rest of uh, india etc they had to fight vijayanagar uh, bahmani sultanate and that's why the fight was so intense so bahmani sultanate was a late medieval muslim empire that ruled the deccan plateau in south india bahmani sultanate came to power in 1347 during the rebellion of ismail mukh against the tughlaq dynasty of delhi so bahmani sultanate was also created when tughlaq dynasty was in charge and after he abdicated in favor of zafar khan who would establish the bahmani sultanate bahmani sultanate was in perpetual war with its neighbors including its rivals vijayanagar empire fine so either you what are we studying right now never lose sight of that provincial governments provincial kingdoms of medieval india Sultanate would begin its decline under reign of Mahmud Shah in 1518 the Bahmani Sultanate split up uh, into the Deccan Sultanate ending its 180 year rule over the Deccan so 180 years is a decent time to rule so they were strong that, that way Gulbarga Bidar all these places right they became separate sultanates after the breakdown of Bahmani all right next question consider the following statements with regard to tuluva dynasty tuluva narsa nayak was related to this regime 
कृष्ण देव राय बिलोंग टू द तुलवा डायनेस्टी इट वॉज द लास्ट डायनेस्टी टू रूल ओवर विजयनगर एम्पायर सो विच ऑफ द गिवन स्टेटमेंट इज ऑर आर करेक्ट वन स्टेटमेंट यू शुड बी वेरी श्योरली श्योर अबाउट दैट इट इज इन करेक्ट दैट वॉट डिड वी स्टडी वी स्टडीड एस एस टी ए राइट सो ए वॉज द लास्ट डायनेस्टी ऑफ विजयनगर एम्पायर टू रूल सो इट इज द लास्ट डायनेस्टी तुलवा इज द लास्ट डायनेस्टी बिकम्स इन करेक्ट तुलवा नरसा नायक वॉज रिलेटेड टू दिस रिजीम दिस इज करेक्ट वेरी क्लियरली तुलवा तुलवा राइट basically who was tuluva narsa nayak he was the father of krishna dev raya everyone knows that krishna dev raya is important right but uh, now upsc wants to go towards the lineage go towards the legacy so father of krishna dev raya was also from tuluva dynasty so he was not the first one in his dynasty also krishna dev raya belong to the tuluva dynasty is absolutely correct so here only two is the correct answer all right what we'll do is we'll do a small quick coverage of the entire sangam uh, of this entire uh, vijayanagar empire right quickly we'll do it so the empire saw the rule of four different dynasties sangam sulva tuluva aravidu Sangam dynasty was Shaivite, while rest were Vaishnavites. Very important. This is a very important distinction that only one dynasty. As for Sangam, as for Shaivite. Now Sulva is also there, so you can be confused. But you need to remember this much. कहीं पे तो दिमाग लगाना पड़ेगा ना. You cannot be having uh, shortcuts for everything. So Sangam dynasty was Shaivite. First dynasty was Shaivite. Rest were Vaishnavites. so let's start with sangam dynasty harihara the first ruled from 1336 to 1356 so for 20 years um one king ruled and uh, gained control over most of the area south of the tungabhadra river earned the title of master of the eastern and western areas this is also important sometimes this kind of question is asked purva paschim samudra uh, sam uh, samudradhi shavar right so this is asked then after his death his brother bukka raya the first took over in 1356 and ruled till 1377 in 1367 bukka one launched an assault on the mudkal fortress in revenge bhamani sultanat crossed the tungabhadra and marched into vijayanagar so 1367 a major showdown has happened defeated the king forced him to retreat to the jungle long war ensued and the bahmani sultan had the upper hand because of the use of artillery right bahmani sultan and they were closer to mughals also right and they were mughal generals only so that was there finally a treaty share, uh, shared the disputed tungabhadra dwar between the kingdoms kingdom was expanded to the eastern coast under harihara the second he conquered territories from reddies varangal ganga rulers contested bahmani sultanat this is very important captured goa and belgaum from the bahmani so this is important goa is important overall sent an expedition to northern sri lanka even this is important right their expansion east was stopped because of because the varangal ruler had seized golconda and kolas from the bahmani sultanate signed a treaty treaty between varangal and bahmani forced forced an alliance that lasted for about uh, 50 years so vijayanagar empire could not scale upwards right they could only scale uh, west to east all right some important rulers of the sangam dynasty and uh, dev raya the first he was the one on which a question was also asked he was defeated by bahmani sultan firoz shah not firoz shah tughlaq bahmani sultan uh, firoz shah in the fight over uh, tungabhadra he had to pay 10 lakh hans pearls and elephants gave his daughter in marriage to the sultan devraya entered into an alliance with varangal to partition the reddy kingdom between them today um, andhra telangana area has a lot of surnames reddy right uh, some of your surnames also might be reddy so uh, reddies of those times varangal switched alliance to vijayanagar this helped devraya defeat sultan firoz shah bahmani annex the entire reddy kingdom up to the mouth of krishna river 
Devraya also constructed a dam and this was a question on which que this was the part where question was asked. Who was the one who constructed dam on Tungabhadra and irritate, uh, sorry, irrigated cities uh, and villages with canals from this dam? This exact line was asked and the ruler was asked, right? Now, in this kind of a question, you, uh, because Krishna Dev Raya was not given as an option, otherwise most people would have gone for Krishna Dev Raya. But after Krishna Dev Raya, it is Dev Raya who is one of the most popular rulers because as you can see, he forged an alliance, right? So, the the easy part of UPSC is that they want to, you to be commonsensical, okay? So, they would give you options. For instance, in 2020, they gave a long dialogue about how there should be tolerance, how there should be, you know, this and that. And then they asked that who said this dialogue? And one of the options was Ashoka the Great. Uh, sorry, Akbar or Ashoka? I think Ashoka. Yes. So, why would you not choose Ashoka? Because Ashoka has said everything at his time. Right? It was about tolerance of religion and all. So, in that option, because there was no other strong leader. That is why Dev Raya was the option that you should have gone for. Of course, you should know a little bit about uh, this uh, Vishnagar Empire. Aisa nahi hai ki you can do it from scratch. But uh, overall, you should be knowing how to go for commonsensical answers. Then what else to be is to be known about Dev Raya? Because a question has already been asked on him. He has also, uh, he has also built a dam on the river Haridra. He also built the Malikarjun temple in Malapagundi. In 1420, Italian traveler Niccolo Conti, not Manoki, okay, Conti, visited Vijayanagar, described it as a magnific magnificent city. There is Kannad inscription of Devraya first at Hazara Ram temple. Hmm, this is important, Hazara Ram temple in modern day Hambi, okay. So, Devraya, because question has already been asked. Then, Devraya the second considered the greatest ruler of Sangam dynasty. Of Sangam dynasty, of not overall Vijanagar. Greatest ruler of Vijanagar is Krishna Devraya. Strengthened his army in a clever way by recruiting Muslims in the army and giving them Jagirs. Right? So, a Hindu king but recruiting Muslims also. Right? This is the characteristic of a successful king. Then made all Hindu soldiers and officers learn mounted ar archery from them. Because he knew that the Bhavani Sultanate is better at this. So we need to learn this, right? 1443 crossed the Tungabhadra in order to recover regions south of Krishna. After three hard, ba hard battles, both sides agreed to maintain existing frontiers. Portuguese traveller Nunis visited during this time wrote that Kilan, Sri Lanka, Pulikat, Pegu and Tenasserim paid tribute to Devraya the second. Fine, so this is important. Persian traveller Abdul Razak elaborated about the army troops of Devraya the second as well. After the reign of uh, Devraya the second, an internal struggle for the throne ensued weakening of the kingdom. Right? So dynasties have also changed. It's like just like Overall, it's a Hindu dynasty. Vijayanagar is the area. But the, the people, the families who are ruling are changing. From 1450, Orissa's Gajpati rulers made raids into South India up to Madurai, which weakened the Vijayanagar and shrunk the authority of Rayas to Karnataka. Okay, so that is there. Then, um, Sangam dynasty is gone. Now, Saluva dynasty, not for a very long period of time, 1485 to 1505. And only three rulers were there. Saluva Narsimha Devraya, Thimma Bhupala and Narsimha Raya the second. And uh, majority of Saluva Narsimha Devraya's reign was devoted to moderately successful campaigns to subdue his vassals around the realm and fruitless attempts to halt the Suryavamsa monarch of Orissa's expansion. Fine, not very important dynasty overall, but it is there in the queue. In order to restart the horse trade. Horse trade, horses coming from West Asia had to come through the Delhi, uh, from the Brahmani Sultanate. Right? So, they were not easily accessible to the Vijayanag uh, Vijayanagar Empire. That's why Vijayanagar developed its navies also. And had to expand westwards. Hmm. Which had been taken over by the Brahman 
Narsimha also established additional ports on the west coast. Fine. Narsimha's youngest son, Narsimha Raya II, succeeded his brother as king after Narsimha's eldest son, Thima Bhupa II, was assassinated. You don't need to remember the names. But overall, you see that because West Asia, uh, say, they had to import horses and they could not transgress the Bahamani Sultanate, so they established ports on western side. Despite being given the title Veera Narsimha, the eldest son and heir apparent of Naras excised real power. And in 1505, he gave the order to kill Imadi Narsimha. Then he assumed the throne, establishing the Tuluva dynasty. And Tuluva dynasty had the greatest ruler, which was Krishna Dev Raya. Krishna Dev Raya, greatest ruler, Vijayanagar Empire, brought about the greatest kingdom of South India in the medieval period. He had to contend against the successor states which rose after the breakdown of Bahamani Sultanate like the Bijapur Sultanate. He defeated Bijapur in 1520. This is very, very important. After Bahamani Sultanate broke down, four to five different kingdoms, Muslim kingdoms took over. And out of that, uh, Krishna Dev Raya defeated the Sultanate of Bijapur. Fought against the continuous incursions of Gajapati rulers. In the west, he conquered Belgam and Gulbarga. Did not pay much attention to developing the navy, which proved bad as the Portuguese beat them in maritime trade. Right? So, this is important. That for the longest time, for Indian rulers, including Jahangir, including uh, Krishna Dev Raya, the enemy was not the British. Okay, enemy were the Portuguese and in fact British came and acted as friends that okay we will save you for the pro from the Portuguese. When the Timurid monarch Babar invaded northern India, he recognized Rana Sangha that is the king of Chittor and Krishna Dev Raya as the two greatest Hindu kings of India. So, Babar. During his rule, the Portuguese explorers Domingo Pez and Duarte Barbosa Travel to the Vijayanagar Empire and their travel diaries reveal that monarch was both a skilled administrator and a superb general, leading from the front in combat, even ministering the injured. So that's why that's what makes uh, Krishna Dev Raya very great. Also, he created a lot of Rai Gopurams. What is Raya Gopuram? Basically, Gopuram is big uh, is the are the big gates of Vijayanagar architecture, and Raya Gopuram were the Gopurams which were made by the Rayas, Krishna Dev Raya, right? Raya means the king, so made by the Rayas of Vijayanagar Empire. Okay, so Krishna Dev Raya becomes important. Now he was very keen on developing art, culture, and architecture. He was also known as Andhra Bhoj. So, you should be knowing. One king is Mihir Bhoj. We have already studied about him. But Andhra Bhoj, who is called Andhra Bhoj, it is actually Vijayanagar Empire who is called, uh, sorry, Krishna Dev Raya who is called Andhra Bhoj. He himself wrote a book on polity. He patronized eight eminent scholars known as Ashtadigaj, one of whom was Tenali Raman. The famous stories of Tenali Raman are very uh, part and parcel of every child's childhood. Pedana or Andhra Kavita Pitama was another great scholar from them. His reign is known as the golden age for Telugu literature. Pedana wrote Manu Charitam, Alasi Pradana, we've talked about it, and Harikatha Saram. Krishna Deva himself wrote Amukta Malyada and Jamavi Kalyanam. So Amukta Malyada was in Telugu and Jambavi Kalyanam was in Sanskrit. Even today, Telugu is one of the classical languages, so it's important to know the classical literature. Nandi Thimana wrote Parijatha Paharnam. Madhyagari Malana wrote Raj Shekhar Charitramu. Durjati wrote Kalahasti Mahatimu. Ayala Raju Ramabhadru wrote Sakala Katha Sangraha and Rama Bhudamu. Pingali Suran wrote Raghav Panda Vyamu Kala Purnodayam and Prabhavate Pradyamana. Of course, I am not expecting you to remember all these at once. Just make a sticky note out of them and stick it at a place where you can see it again and again. Okay, because sometimes randomly they are asking. Okay, shall. Then last dynasty, Aravidu dynasty, fourth and the last Hindu dynasty of Vijayanagar Empire. Founder was Tirumala Devraya. 
whose brother Ram Raya had been masterful regent of the last ruler. Ram Raya is also very important because under Ram Raya, the battle of Talikota was fought and Raya is a term for Raja only, right? So under Ram Raya, battle of Talikota was fought and led to the subsequent destruction of Vijayanagar by the combined forces of Muslim states of Deccan. Aravidu family claimed to be Kshatriyas and were based in Andhra region, claimed to belong to Atriya Gotra and traced their lineage to eastern Chalukya king Raj, uh, Raj Raj Narendra. Fine. So, Aravidu dynasty, even after the empire had fallen, I told you, right, Battle of Talikota, uh, empire had fallen in 1565. But after that, Aravidu dynasty continued, continued by their rule by establishing themselves as the Rajas of Anegundi. These descendants of Aravidu dynasty, despite not holding active political power, are often referred, uh, revered and respected due to their historical lineage and association with the Vijayanagar Empire. Fine. So, the, it was some time taking, uh, a little bit time taking to study all the, you know, dynasties and everything. But now we are done with it. Consider the following statements with regard to Krishna Dev Raya. Krishna Dev Raya was originally a Tulu speaker. He himself authored Amukta Malyada in Kannad. He was popularly known as Andhra Bhoj. So, how many of the given statements are correct? See, Tulu is an important language. In fact, Tulu, uh, there has been demand to include Tulu as a part of classical language as well. So, first is absolutely correct. He was originally not a Telugu speaker. He was a Tulu speaker. Amukta Malyada was not in Kannad, although the, the overall region was Kannad only, uh, the Kannad region, but Amukta Malyada um, was in Telugu. Right. So, second is incorrect and he was called as Andhra Bhoj is correct. So, here only two is correct. Next. Consider the following statements with regard to Krishna Dev Raya. Portuguese governor Albert Cook sent his ambassadors to Krishna Dev Raya. He defeated the Gajapatis of Odisha and Sultanate of Bhamani and eight eminent scholars known as Ashd Diggaj were at his court. How many of the given statements are correct? Third one you know is absolutely correct. Tenali Raman, right? Alasi Pedana was a part of Ashtadigaj. First and second are also correct. Albert Cook was the second and the most important Portuguese governor. We have studied about it, right? So, Albert Cook sent his ambassadors to Krishnadev Raya is correct. Defeated the Gajapatis of Odisha and Sultanate of Bhamani is also correct. So, Gajapatis of Odisha towards eastern side of Vijayanagar. Sultanate of Bamani, northern side. So, here all three are correct. Alright. Next. Consider the following statements with regard to administration under the Vijayanagar Empire. The king was assisted by a council of ministers and their office was hereditary most of the times. The lowest administrative unit was called Sthal. And the rulers gave only very limited powers to the local authorities um, in the administration. So, how many of the given statements are correct? See, overall, I have told you that strong kings will not give the hereditary tag, but this is an exception. Here, the king was assisted by a council of ministers and their office was hereditary most of the times. This is absolutely correct, okay? Now, lowest administrative unit was called Sthal. No, Sthal was just above the lowest administrative unit, which was called Gram. And you can have a chronology of these units also. The lowest units, unit was called Gram, which is a village. Then there was Sthal. You can call them a group of villages. Then there was Nadu. You know, like Tamil Nadu. Nadu was not a state like today. Nadu was just above like a district. Then there was Mandalam. Then there was Mandalam. And finally, all the, the entire area was divided into Rajya. So, Rajya was the biggest unit. Gram was the uh, smallest unit. And this is the continuity. Even today, we call states as Rajas. Right? So, this is important. 
ओके रूलर्स गेव ओनली वेरी लिमिटेड पावर्स टू द लोकल अथॉरिटीज इन द एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इट इज इन करेक्ट दिस वॉज एक्चुअली समथिंग विच इज द नायक सिस्टम द नायक दैट रूलर्स वुड बी गिविंग अवे पावर टू द नायक्स सो हियर द आंसर बिकम्स ए द नायक सिस्टम ऑफ विजयनगर इज इंपॉर्टेंट Consider the following statements with regard to the conditions of women during Vijayanagar Empire. Hanamma and Thirumalamma were famous female poets of this period. Women were educated and worked at various posts in the government departments, and women received training in wrestling and fighting, and were employed as bodyguards. How many of the given statements are correct? So here, this was a question. Similar question was asked. that what were the kind of roles that were performed by women during the vijayanagar empire so women performed the role of accountants sooth saying all the options in that particular one were correct the purpose of giving this question is that there was a period because you know our history constantly says that women were oppressed women were this women were that there were there was oppression yes but there were some some instances where in some kings for example harsha he was not in favor of sati right he stopped sati because his sister had to do sati if he did not sati right if he did not stop sati so uh, he stopped sati so there have been example similarly vijayanagar empire also is a very very empowered empire when it comes to women right females were poets also and some of the uh, poets are hanamma and thirumalamma and uh, they were educated and worked at various posts in government departments and received training in wrestling and fighting so here all three are correct overall whenever a question regarding women and uh, vijayanagar empire comes you know that broadly they were empowered right and this is a recurrent theme that is coming you know even a question was asked um uh, from uh, kautilya's arthashastra that you know what was the kind of rights that a female slave enjoyed if she gave birth to a son hmm so women rights are something that is an important theme consider the following architectural styles use of soapstone and hard granite use of mortar or cementing agent kalyan mandapam with carved pillars how many of the buff features of architecture under the vijayanagar empire but 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 what is being asked here is that how many are incorrect so which of the given ones are not features of vijayanagar architecture that is the question that is being asked here so soapstone soapstone is being used since eternity since the indus valley civilization and hard granite both are used over here use of mortar or cementing agent this did not happen and that in fact sorry that is the beauty of uh, overall this uh, this you know uh, this uh, ancient and medieval architecture and that is what we are unable to understand that how did they create all these buildings without cement okay so cement was not used but yes kalyan mandapa is a feature of this dravidian architecture started from the chola empire and this was there so here only one is the incorrect answer the vijayanagar architectural style is a blend of dravidian and deccan islamic styles with some hindu and rajput features some common features of vijayanagar architecture include stone carvings detailed work and brightly colored tiles hampi the ruins of hampi then vijayanagar uh, district are listed as unesco world heritage site and empire also added new structures and made modifications to hundreds of temples for example i am telling you right rai gopuram was added by krishna dev raya to multiple temples in the southern india so virupaksh temple is also important at hampi karnataka now one task i have for you please tell me under whose reign who was the king when virupaksh temple was created please comment who was the king when virupaksh temple was built 
ओके चलो नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग पेयर सिंबल्स और टर्म्स यूज इन विजयनगर एम्पायर एंड देर यूजेज वराहा ब्यूटिफुल बर्ड कैरीड ऑन कॉइन्स गंडा बेरुंडा चीफ गोल्ड कॉइन उदय नाना देसीगल ट्रेड गिल्स हाउ मेनी ऑफ द गिवन स्टेटमेंट गिवन पेयर आर नॉट करेक्टली मैच ओके नॉट करेक्टली मैच देर आस्किंग सो लेट मी जस्ट टेल यू दिस इज अगेन टर्म बेस्ड यू नीड टू मेमोराइज सर्टन टर्म्स सी वराहा वॉज द चीफ गोल्ड कॉइन ओके वराहा वॉज द चीफ गोल्ड कॉइन एंड गंदा बेरुंदा वॉज ब्यूटिफुल बर्ड कैरीड ऑन कॉइन्स फाइन सो दीज टू आर नॉट इन करेक्टली मैच नॉट करेक्टली मैच एंड उदय नाना देसी गर्ल वॉज अ ट्रेड गिल्ड so here only two pairs are correct uh, only two pairs are incorrectly matched and only one pair is correctly matched these are term based questions if you know the term you know the term if you don't know it move forward don't don't try to guess work unless it's very very apparent right unless it's very apparent don't try to guess work all right next consider the following kingdoms bahmani vijayanagar chalukyas cholas yadavs hoysalas marathas moguls How many of the above pairs of kingdoms were in conflict over the Raichur Doab? This is a very very interesting question. Raichur Doab के लिए which were the dynasties which were in uh, which were fighting? So that's coinciding with the Krishna Tunga Badra Doab, also called Raichur Doab. So Bahmani Vijayanagar we know that is correct. Chalukyas and Cholas were also fighting for Raichur Doab. because it was a very fertile area right so they were fighting yadavs and hoysals also fighting so you hoysals remember uh, ended while vijayanagar empire was still there but maratha and mughals mughals are way upwards marathas are towards the you know southern side why would they be in conflict over the raichur doab so here only three is the correct answer and raichur doab becomes important you can see here the overall area that this is the raichur right this is raichur and uh, this is where the krishna tungabhadra doab is forming and very fertile area and in deccan right there is also there are also periods of uh, drought because it's very monsoon dependent so any fertile area becomes very important so raichur doab was very important that way next consider the following pairs with reference to administration during the bahmani sultanat waziri kul prime minister amiri kul head of judiciary and charities wazir ashraf head of province and sadari jahan finance head how many of the above pairs are correctly matched so let me just tell you one by one waziri kul was definitely the prime minister so this is correct wazir has historically meant a uh, prime minister only right so bahmani sultanat the language is also towards urdu urdu was developed later but persian amiri kul amiri kul was finance head in hindi we use the term amir now to it's like hindi hindustani um we use this term amir to refer to someone who's rich okay So you can remember Amiri Kul was finance head who was dealing with a lot of money. Then Waziri Ashraf, Waziri Ashraf was foreign minister, foreign minister. Okay, and Sadari Jahan, Sadari Jahan was head of judiciary and charities. There was another uh, official which was the head of province which was Tarafdar. It was Tarafdar. fine taraf even today we use this term taraf means one side right so taraf da important so here only one is correctly matched but all are important next consider the following statements founded the city of ahmednagar made it his capital in 1413 ce shifted earlier capital from patan not patna imposed jizya on hindus in gujarat destroyed several temples influenced by the jain architectural traditions of gujarat he built the jami masjid and teen darwaza 
above statement describes who among the following ruler see if someone is building a city why would they not name that city after them if they are going to this extent of building a whole city why would they not name the city after them so we are talking about ahmed shah over here i told you right we will be talking about certain important kings also ahmed shah overall is important because he built ahmedabad his dynasty is not important he was from muzaffarid dynasty he was from muzaffarid dynasty not very important but um, and muzaffarid dynasty was uh, grew a little when delhi sultanate declined but uh, what is important is that uh, he was the one who founded ahmedabad he made it his capital in 1413 he did impose jizya jizya was a uh, poll tax tax on being a non muslim so he did that and destroyed several temples yes and he was influenced by jain architectural tradition so ahmed shah becomes important it is um, and overall who was ahmed shah ahmed shah was the grandson of muzaffar shah ahmed shah was the grandson of muzaffar shah and muzaffar shah was the founder of the kingdom of gujarat okay so all that becomes important ahmed shah the first born ahmed khan ruler of muzaffarid dynasty reigned over gujarat from 1411 until his death in 1442 so lesser known this is jama mosque of ahmedabad again built by him only and uh, grandson and please remember this is before the mughal empire right so there were important rulers founder of ahmedabad gujarat's most popular city which carries his name he was also a poet having written a collection of persian poetry he built ahmed shah's mosque and jama mosque in ahmedabad jama masjid only right but not the delhi one delhi one was built by shah jahan consider the following pairs with reference to local independent kingdoms and their dynasties uh, muzaffarid dynasty gujarat guila dynasty kashmir lohar dynasty chittor how many of the given statements are correctly matched so muzaffarid we know they ruled in gujarat guila actually ruled in chittor right the rajput area and lohar dynasty was in kashmir theek okay? hai these were some dynasties which are uh, focusing which are ruling on certain specific areas again uh, if this kind of a question comes if you are aware of it do it if you are not then move forward ancient medieval history most of the questions will be meant to be left okay next last question for the day consider the following paragraph he is known as bad shah that is the great sultan and as akbar of kashmir he abolished jizya and prohibited cow slaughter the hindus occupied many high offices in his government for instance shriya bhat was a minister of justice and court physician he defeated the mongol invasion of ladakh and conquered the baltistan area who among the following is described in above paragraph again this question is mentioned so that you know how to respond to these kind of questions which you have no idea about the answer to this one is zainul abidin he was a muslim ruler but very tolerant and uh, he why he is important because he is called akbar of kashmir right so he automatically becomes important and why uh, that that point akbar of kashmir he was actually uh, very tolerant and at that point akbar was not even a legend so later on he was given the tag of akbar of kashmir but now uh, that he's been given it is important that we know he was from shah miri dynasty shah miri dynasty so you can see lot of kingdoms were there lot of provincial kingdoms were there you are not supposed to remember all of them you can't remember all of them one question might be asked and that one question also might be asked in such a way that you will not be able to respond right so it's better give minimal effort to this as much as is required and uh, yes that's why we're just doing 15 questions the next class will be your most awaited class of mughal dynasty it will be from mughals so it will be uh, a very long class we'll be doing 31 questions so i'll see you all in the next class and if you derived some value out of this class do let me know in the comments okay 
Thank you so much for joining. Keep studying hard uh, and uh, take care of your health, most importantly. Bye-bye.